This is a compilation video of the worst Transformers figures I've reviewed this year. This will not include any obviously bad bootlegs. This is the Gamer Series War for Cybertron Bumblebee. We're going to be taking a look at this and the original figure. Let's start with this guy since he's the main review. Here is the figure and I am ready for war. So straight away, I think the head sculpt on this figure is absolutely fantastic. Pretty game accurate and I love the way it looks. The blue eyes are done really well along with the rest of the face sculpt being really good. A quick look at the back, not really a whole lot going on. He does have a backpack which is pretty screen accurate. I'm very surprised that there's not really a whole lot of hollow bits on this figure, the only part being right over here. He basically has hollow ass syndrome. Tell me doc, what do I have? I'm sorry Bumblebee, but you have hollow ass syndrome. Get fucked nerd. Luckily, I have a solution. The arms and shoulders are looking not too bad. You do have some tiny amounts of detail on this figure to make the figure stand out a bit, but not a whole lot. This part on the hands is yellow paint. You can tell, but the paint matching is done pretty well in my opinion. Now onto the chest piece. I'm still really not a big fan of it. Maybe if it was angled down a bit more, it would look better. But personally to me, I just don't like it, especially when you look at it from the sides. It does just seem very hollow. And I'll compare it to the chest piece of the original one in a second. But first, let's look further down the figure. The rest of the sculpt work on the legs look pretty all right. But I am going to go on a big rant here, so get ready. It is ugly having these hinges out, which is necessary for the transformation, but it's still ugly. The wheels are on the inside of the leg facing each other rather than being in the center like they should be in the game. Now, he does have some basic detail on this side of the legs, but honestly, it feels like it should be on the inside. With the way they designed the figure, the legs really seem like they're backwards, even though they are supposed to be this way. I really don't like how this side looks compared to this side. But anyways, rant over. In terms of the articulation for the figure, the head can move up and down. You do get a full 360, which is nice. These arms can move out and you get a full 360 there. Bicep rotation, elbow bend, this can hinge in for the transformation. The leg can move out, it can move back, decently far out to the side. You get a pretty good knee bend, and that's it. There is no foot articulation on this figure. I mean, this can hinge, but that is for the transformation, so it doesn't really count. And yeah, this can't move either, so that is pretty unfortunate. In my opinion, this figure is pretty weak so far. I'm definitely not 100% sold on this figure. The transformation process is kind of a mess. This back piece tends to fall off, as well as these pieces right here, mostly during the transformation, and it's very annoying. But now let's take a look at the original figure. In my opinion, so far, this one definitely seems a lot more accurate to the game. Unfortunately, I don't have the blaster for it, so we'll have to skip past that. I literally picked this up the other day at a local toy shop for like $10. The sticker is still on here, so let me remove that. No. Oh, uh. Get out. There we go. This figure is also a lot more slender and lanky. And then since this is an older figure, the feet don't really stay in place, unfortunately. But looking at the head sculpt on this one, it's also done fairly well. And then this is not a spot for light piping. It's just a black stripe. The chest piece on this figure is done a lot better, in my opinion. It's a lot slimmer and more appealing. This figure does also have a bit more detail on it and some more paint applications. But like just a tiny amount more. Here's a closer look at the arms and the wheels on this one do have some translucent red plastic. And on top of that, you do get these cool Energon blades. I think these look really sick. And Reminds me a lot of Wreckage's blade. It is unfortunate that the new figure does not have these. And ada ada, the crotch piece seems to be a bit more detailed. Also, this section underneath the belly is sculpted really well. The legs on this one do look a lot better than the legs on the new figure. These definitely do look a lot cleaner and accurate to the game. You do have some metallic gold over here and some really nice sculpt work. Now, before we get to the comparison, let's do the articulation on this guy. He can move up and down in a full 360. Arms can move out. 360 arm rotation. It's a bit awkward to do though. Bicep rotation, a really good elbow bend. And this one does have hand rotation. Waist rotation, legs can move out. They can move back, out to the side. Leg rotation there and a knee bend and then this can move back and forth. Now comparing the figures side by side, this one is definitely a lot bigger. You can also see the shades of yellow are very different. I do much prefer the red colors on this one over this figure. I think the head sculpts on both the figures are very good. This figure does not have that black piece on the chest, which is accurate to the game. Here's a closer look at those chest pieces so you can see the difference. These little wheel sections on the arms are also done very differently. And then here's a closer look at the legs of both of the figures. I definitely think the legs on this are a lot better. I am slightly leaning towards favoring this figure over this one. And then here's a closer look at the back of both the figures. And while this figure is good in robot mode, the transformation on this is also pretty shit. And it is kind of a heavy shell former, which is unfortunate. The Gamer Studio series figure comes with three weapons. You have a sort of more cannon-like weapon. It's got some really nice sculpt work to it. And then you get a more rifle-like weapon. And lastly, you get a really neat looking sword. To apply the weapons, you just remove his arm and then you can stick any one of the two weapons on. And unfortunately, this figure has no ass placement for the arm, unlike the Optimus Prime figure. But what you can do is we can take his arm and attach it on there. And that's a fun thing you can do with it. You probably 
don't recognize me because of the red arm. Bumblebee, give me back my fucking arm. Now for the transformation and vehicle mode. Uh, like I said earlier, it does kind of suck. The first thing I like to do is rotate the waist around. Next, let's bring this out, bring in the hands. So that way we can rotate these forward like that. Same with this one, bring the hand down, rotate it forward, just like that. Next, we need to straighten up these shoulder pieces. Now this section can be a bit tricky to do. We need to just bring out this chest piece and it can be a little bit stubborn to do, but once we've done that, now we can take this flap and bring it over and under. And once again, this piece constantly falls off, which is really annoying. Now we're gonna take these sections and pull them out and then adjust all this. Take these arms, bring them into the side. Same with this one. God damn it. Bring it into the side. Once again, make sure this is out all the way. So that way we can move the arms in position like so. Same with this one. Just bring it in place and make sure it just tabs in properly. Now down to the legs, make sure they're like this. So that way you can bend them 90 degrees and then flip this over. Same with this one and bend the legs. That way we can bring this out, bring this one out as well. And now what we need to do is to make sure this piece is underneath this, which can be kind of annoying to do. God fucking damn it. Moving on. It's a little hard to see, but you want it something like that. Now we can move these legs into position. Same with this one. And now kind of just tab everything into place. Let's readjust this. Make sure these pieces are flipped over. And then also bring these in. So now we can bring down this back section and align everything into place until we get a good vehicle mode. And finally, here is a vehicle mode for the Gamer Studio Series Bumblebee. It is a very solid vehicle mode, even though the transformation is kind of wonky. I haven't been able to get this back section to tab into place properly. And then sometimes I've noticed this piece can pop out. Out a little bit but it seems to be fine right now uh, but the rest of the figure does look pretty good with the black windows and the red lines going out throughout it the front of the car mode also looks really great here he is from underneath if you want to take a look uh, he looks a little bit dead right now all the wheels move individually and it is sculpted really well there is weapon storage on the figure you can place all the weapons back over here but what the instructions say is to place this up top this goes underneath and the sword goes in at the back now the transformation on this guy is pretty bad arguably a lot worse than this guy so one of the first things to do is bring out these pieces to the side and then bring this foot up. Do the same here and bring that up. Make sure these wheels are out so that way you can push the leg in. Same with this one. And this figure is so loose and all over the place. Might be because of age, but it is really annoying to work with. We can just kind of leave the legs there for now. We can unfold this and bring it all out. Flip over the head and the clearance on this is pretty bad. So you kind of got to force it a bit. Once we've done that, we can bring the shoulders in like this. Same with this one. Rotate it like so and then bring the arm here. So that way we can tap these into place. So go ahead and do that. Same with this one. Bring this out to the side same here and then this will tab up front so now we can go to this back section fold this down so we can bring this out align it up into place and then this section is pretty annoying we just kind of need to fold the legs in there untab this section and bring this up in here same with this one and then these do need to tab into these pegs but what i like to do is get these tabbed into place because if we focus on that it should get the other pieces in place i'm gonna go ahead and adjust this off camera real quick And then here is the final vehicle mode. If you don't get these feet lined up properly, then these won't go into the side. Also, fuck, it doesn't seem like this is tabbed in all the way. You know what? It's fine. It is fine. I don't care enough to fix that. Let's just take a look at the vehicle mode. It does look pretty nice. He also has the red lines throughout him. And then the red plastic on the wheels really do help bring it out more. The tinted translucent windows are also a nice touch to the figure. Overall, it is pretty good. It's just the transformation is kind of a mess. And then side by side, you can see this one is definitely a lot bigger. This one kind of feels like a chibi-fied version of this figure. How many times have I said chibi fight in a video? Leave a comment down below. But here's a comparison of the two figures. Once again, this is impossible to just tab into place. Whatever, I don't care. You can see a lot of the sculpt work is different on these. While the transformation does suck on both of these figures, if you can do it properly, the vehicle modes do look pretty great. This is the Commander of the Stars, a third party figure of Cybertron Optimus. And this figure has some major problems. For example, one of the fingers broke off as I was just about to finish the video. We're going to take a look at this and compare it to the original figure. Well, not the original because this is a redeck but I'm gonna call it the original for the sake of the video. The box art on this figure does look pretty cool. I kind of like how it has that G1 aesthetic with the grid lines and gradient red color. The box art tries to sell this as a premium product, but unfortunately it's not, and we'll get to that. I love this figure, but that's mainly due to nostalgia reasons. And if I'm being honest, this figure has a lot of problems that I need to address. First of all, thank you to the Show Z store for sending me this guy. I've been wanting this figure for a long time and I kept asking them about it. Please, please. And they were kind enough to give it to me, which I really do appreciate. Make sure to use code MECHA if you buy something. You know what happens if you don't. 
So I feel kind of bad saying this figure has a lot of problems, but it's not their fault since they didn't make the figure. Let's start off with the good. This figure looks absolutely amazing in its base mode. The head sculpt looks like it was ripped out straight from the show. He's got a lot of nice silver and yellow paints throughout him. Sculpt work of the arms, the chest, the abdomen area, all the way down to the legs is done really well. There's a lot of simple nice detail on the figure. You can see it on the shoulders here. You can see the door panels. This is very smooth. Some nice detail underneath here. The way this abdomen section layers up is really nice. I do feel like these skirt pieces on the side look a little bit awkward. Inside the arms, you have some cool detail. Down over the design on the legs over here is really nice. And then further down the legs, the sculpt work is really good. And you can see some cool designs going on throughout it. Same on this side. The figure is pretty faithful to the original and a lot of the details are similar as well. He has a lot of die cast parts to him. You can see it on the arms, the crotch piece, the back side of the crotch piece, the joints on the legs, same with the knee joints, this part over here, as well as these parts of the legs, along with the feet. And that gives this figure a nice heft to it and it makes it very bottom heavy, which is useful for the combined mode so it doesn't fall over. I have unexpectedly descended from a vertical position to a horizontal one. And I will get to the combined mode after we get to the transformation of the figure. So make sure to stick around for that. Also, make sure to subscribe. Overall, the rest of the figure looks absolutely gorgeous in the base mode. He is much bigger than the Cybertron release. And side by side, the figures look very similar. Everything from the head, the chest, and the shoulders is pretty much an updated version of its prior counterpart. So the issues on this figure, um, there's quite a few. I've heard the neck can snap, and there's been a lot of reports of the arm ratchet joints failing on people. And yep, mine just failed right over there on camera. Now it's all loose. Basically, as soon as you move the ratchet joints, they yeah. die. Also, the fingers on my copy broke straight out of the box as soon as I transformed the figure. And he does come with replacement finger pieces, which I had to replace, but they were kind of hectic to do because with the way the fingers break, these little ball joints would get stuck in there and then I'd have to kind of dig them out. And if you look on this side, you can see I damaged the hands when trying to get it out. The figure also took my own finger while I was at it, but I did replace all the fingers minus the thumbs because they seem fine so far. Hopefully they don't break. There's a fix for the ratchet joints, which involves unscrewing the arms. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to accept my fate with this. This figure does come with the matrix of leadership, which if you open up this chest piece and we take this out, it does look pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's not die cast or anything. Here it is compared to another matrix for my oversized knockoff masterpiece Optimus Prime. As you can see, uh, they look very different. Not much to say there. Also opening up does reveal some nice detail on the inside. And here it is compared to the matrix on the Cybertron figure. I do think this is the one more accurate to the show. I'm not sure why they decided to go for a more G1 style matrix for the commander of the stars. Honestly, I would have preferred it looking more like the original. So now for articulation, this head can rotate, which once again, I'm afraid to move it all the way around because there have been reports of it snapping. This is a high quality figure, guys. I can look up and down. This is mainly for switching out the mouthpiece, which we'll see in the super mode. This arm with the broken ratchet joint can spin a full 360. So can this one. It's probably going to break if I move it though. Oh, this one's already dead. These shoulder pieces can move. You get a bicep rotation, a double hinge for the elbow bend. The hand can move. This piece can rotate a little bit, but the rest of the hand cannot rotate, which is kind of disappointing. Each finger is individually articulated and once again, it was held to replace them. The skirt piece can move out and around. These front skirt pieces can move up individually, which is different from the Cybertron release where it's one piece. He does have waist rotation, but it does get blocked by the skirt pieces and you have to move this piece down and adjust it so you can get more of a rotation on it. And it is a ratchet joint. Hopefully it doesn't break. These legs can move out. You can move them back and to the side and you do get a rotation. You get a double hinge for the knees, a foot pivot, and this foot can move as well. Also, make sure to check out my Patreon link in the description below. It's only $1 a month and it's a huge support to the channel. Patreon, the acceptable way to beg for money. Here he is next to my KOMP in the Gamer Series Optimus Prime. Now let's compare to the articulation on the Cybertron release. Head can move, arm rotation, arms can move out, rotation over here, elbow bend, hands can close, skirt can move, wheel can move, legs can move forward, back, out to the side, rotation, knee bend. So as you can see, Commander of the Stars has more points of articulation than the Cybertron release, which is really cool. The only pieces didn't break. He does also come with this nice instruction booklet, which points out all the bits of articulation the figure has and basic transformation stuff. Something that's really cool is that it does come with this cyber key. This is considered a gift from the retailer, which I guess is how they get around those copyright laws. And it looks gorgeous too. There is a magnet on the other side because the figure does have LEDs, but I don't have any batteries for them. So we're going to have to skip that. And while I don't have the original cyber key, I do have Vector Prime Cyber Planet key. And what's really cool is that this is compatible with prior figures. I think that's really neat. So if I were to plug this in here, this would pop out. Unfortunately, the commander of the stars doesn't have a slot for the cyber key. He also does come with a nice card with stats on the back. The extra fingers come in this bag. Here's the mess it made. 
made. This might give you an idea of the hell I had to go through for fixing the fingers. And for example, this is going to be really tiny to see. This is one of the ball joints that got stuck in the socket of the hands and it was very hard to get out. With how much time it took for this figure to come out, there shouldn't be this many issues with it. Now the transformation on this is pretty much just like the original with some extra steps. First thing we want to do is bring out these arms just like that. Now we can turn the figure around, bring this flap out so we can move the head down, close that up, bring these arm pieces to the back and then get them into place properly. Adjust these arms. And this actually probably should have been the first step. Open that flap so we can carefully bring the hands in. Anytime I mess with the fingers, I do get a bit nervous. So that's the best I'm going to do for now. Now adjust the arms into place. Rotate this piece around. Same with this one. Make sure it's tabbed into place. Open this. And what we're supposed to do is bring this out. Make sure that doesn't fall out. Bring this piece down. So that way we can bend it like that and get this back into place. Fix these windows to where they're on the side. Take the feet for the super mode and bring them out. Make sure to tab them in. Bring the feet down. Take these pieces, which do feel very light. Adjust them so they're facing that way. I do want to point out the sculpt work and detail on this is done really well. And we just attach them on here. Now we can put this on and adjust it into place. This piece tabs into here, so be careful when taking it out. And here is the vehicle mode. The vehicle mode looks really nice. And once again, just like the original, it looks amazing from all sides. The weapons up at the top are sculpted really well. The die cast parts do stick out, but they look nice. The rubber tires are also a nice addition. Here's a quick size comparison to the original release. As you can see, it's longer. He does have a flight mode, which is very basic and simple to do. You just fold the blaster pieces over the wings and just place it back on the figure. And for some reason, I can't get the cannons to be parallel with each other. They're just kind of sticking out, making a V-shape. This is also where I noticed something wrong about the figure. These pieces should be on like this with the figure, making it more accurate to the original toy. And if I try to do it like that on this figure, I'm not able to get this back piece on. Is, 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 isn't that just... And what makes it even more weird is that for the artillery mode, it is supposed to go on essentially what is the proper way. And as you can see, there's a big gap there, which is why it doesn't work in the vehicle mode. And here's a better look at that artillery mode. Also keep in mind when transforming the figure back into robot mode, you need to bring this down. So when you bring it back up, it brings the abdomen piece out. Now for the super mode. It is once again, pretty much similar to the original. First, you got to bring out the feet on the back of the legs, kind of shift it up and bring it down and under and then snap it into place. Same with the other side. Now we can bring the head up so we can rotate it around the other way, bring it back down and then bring out these side pieces. Now we can take these pieces to connect to the back of the legs on both sides. I just realized it's upside down and that I'm an idiot. Connect it on the right way and make sure it snaps into place. After that, we can take this wing piece and then rotate it the other way. Same with the other side. The wheels need to face up. And now we can bring out these black pieces, bring out these bits from underneath that, take the figure again and then pull out the arms. And now this part is really awkward and kind of scary to do. So this piece plugs into the back, but now we need to take these front shoulder pieces and then lift them up as we push in the arms. It's very awkward to do and I'm really afraid of breaking the figure. On top of that, I'm not able to get it in all the way. So I just kind of leave it there because I don't want to break this any further. I just feel like that's a terrible design. Now here is the final super mode and it does look really cool. He looks great alongside my Cybertron figures. Next to the original figure, he is much larger. Here he is next to my oversized masterpiece knockoff in the gamer series Optimus Prime. The blaster can come out and it does look pretty nice. It also has an LED in it, but I have no batteries. I also refuse to put it in his hands out of fear of breaking the hands. These side cannons can also come out. This can open up as well and does have LEDs. For extra articulation, these cannons can move. These on the wings are on three different hinge joints, so you can get a pretty good range of motion on it. The wings can move as well. And the super mode feet do have a pivot, which is really cool. And all these die cast parts really do help the figure stand because as you can see, it is pretty back heavy. I do wish the figure had these hinge joints, which would make it much easier to apply the backpack onto the figure. Quick interjection, the pinky broke off. I'm not sure if this was one of the ones I replaced. I did kind of get the old fingers mixed up with the replacement fingers. The original fingers were so fragile, you could break them with a feather basically. So he looks great in the super mode. It's just unfortunate he has so many issues to him. Like he towers other figures on my shelf. He has an impressive wingspan. Considering how long this figure was in development, it's a shame that all these issues didn't get fixed. I really don't want to pose this figure too much because I'm afraid of breaking it. This right here is the Bayway Star Leader and it's pretty bad. Star Leader? More like Star Don't Buy This Figure. Now let's open it up so you can actually see what's wrong with this figure. You see, it came broken. As soon as I tried to remove this figure from the packaging, the arm was already broken. And here's a closer look at that right there. It's broken pretty bad, which is unfortunate because the rest of the figure feels pretty solid. Honestly, this is not a bad looking figure and I really wish it wasn't broken. But after reading some of the comments on my post and looking at the figure online, it does seem like this figure has a lot of problems, which is unfortunate because like I said, it's a pretty good looking figure and the feet here are die cast and you can really feel the weight difference there. And this is how it is out of the box. So that's how we're 
going to review it. So if you're like, oh, there's there's this stuff in place that it should, this the back isn't right. There's pieces in places that aren't. Fuck off. Just kidding. I love you. This figure came broken. I don't care anymore. Like it looks really nice. So I'm very disappointed that it came broken. It's like opening a box of chocolates, but instead of chocolate being inside, it's depression. And make sure to subscribe for my declining sanity. So we're just going to review as it is, as it came out of the box. I no longer care. This is a bootleg, so it doesn't really matter. Now this figure is a knockoff of the Studio Series Optimus Primes. Now I think the colors on this are much better than the Studio Series version. This version also has clear windows right over here. While Studio Series 44 does not, but Studio Series 32 does have clear windows also. I wish I had them to compare it to, but they're kind of pricey right now. Honestly, probably worth it after seeing this figure. Wait, hold on. What? Hello? Are you high? I mean, that price is, but are you? Now minus the arm, let's take a closer look at the actual figure. The head sculpt on Optimus isn't bad looking. In fact, it's a really good head sculpt worthy of a little smooch. There is a good amount of detail on there, and the silver looks really nice. And he even has blue eyes. The smokestacks are a nice silver as well. The chest area and abdomen look pretty good. There's some nice detail over there. The crotch piece also has some detail. And you got a nice gold over there. You got some nice mechanical detail on the arms right over here. You got a little bit of gold right over there. Here's a look at the back of the head sculpt. You got some more detail on the top of the figure right there. These are a nice silver over here as well. The flames on it look great. There are a few nub marks all over the figure. There's some right here as well, as well as on the back of the leg right over here. Same over here, some nub marks there. The legs have some nice detail on them as well. I'm not too fond of the color of the thighs right over here. There's a closer look at the detail on the front of the legs, and here's a closer look at the feet that are die cast. And like I said, you can really feel the weight on them. And from what it seems, these are the only thing that are die cast on this figure. Overall, this figure feels pretty solid. Now considering how easily it broke, I'm kind of concerned about the rest of the figure. And honestly, I haven't transformed this yet or messed around with the articulation because I'm afraid of breaking it even more. So we're gonna do that together. Like stepbrother and stepsister. But before we do that, let's move on to the accessories that it comes with. It comes with two swords that aren't in the packaging. They're kind of just thrown in the box. These are meant to be put on like that. Kind of a tight fit, but it goes on there pretty well. A closer look at it. I really like the orange on it and the silver paintwork. All the little details on there. It's even got that symbol on there. It also comes with two swords that it can hold upright. These also have great orange and silver on them. Here is a comparison of the two. Not really much of a difference there besides the handles. He also comes with replacement chest pieces. And they have a little bit of detail on there. So you can take that off. And here's a closer look at the details inside there. And you can put these on. This abdomen piece is supposed to be from Studio Series 32 Revenge of the Fallen Optimus. And I'll throw a picture of that right over here. And as you can see, there is a bit of a difference. It doesn't look entirely accurate. While this chest piece is supposed to be from Studio Series 44 Dark of the Moon. It also comes with another head right over here. A very sad looking head. And this is the one without the mouth guard. Here's a closer look at them side by side. Let's see if we can replace the head without breaking anything. There we go. Okay, that was fairly easy. And inside you can see the blue there. That's for his eyes. So I noticed I'm not able to get it in. It looks like I broke off this piece on the top of the head. Right over here on this one it's still on while on this one it's broken off. So it looks like I won't be able to replace the headpiece. And it looks like I did the thing I was afraid to do. Unlike the other thing I'm afraid to do which is talk to women. Now let's go through the articulation. It looks like the head can move up and down. It is on a ball joint and it can spin around and you can move them side to side. These little pieces right here can move. The arms can go out that far and they can spin around on the biceps and it looks like the arms can spin all the way around elbow bend right over there. It only goes 90 degrees. The hands can spin all the way around. This little flap can come out for the transformation. These chest pieces out here can move. The waist can spin around. These little knee pads can move. The legs can come out like that and they can move forward right there and you can also bring them back like that. There is rotation right over here. The feet can pivot left to right and they can move up and back. Honestly I'm really upset that this figure came broken because the colors on this and the sculpting and the molding is really good. I mean the mold is the same as a studio series, which is why it's really good. But I really do like the blues on here. They look great. A lot of the silver paintwork looks great. So I'm very disappointed that it came broken. But hey, now it looks like it's Optimus when he loses his arm from Dark of the Moon. Yeah, I'm stealing that joke from you guys. So I haven't transformed this figure yet. I like to transform them at least once before I transform them on camera. It's just that this figure is so bad. If anything happens, I want to capture it on camera. So I will concede we should probably make this look right. 
And that right there is why I didn't really want to fiddle with the figure too much to make it look accurate. And now I can't really get this to fit back into place properly. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Now can we get this one to go in like that without breaking it? Okay, it looks like it can. And tab these into place. And that is actually how the back is supposed to be. I, I, I don't really like it. It's very bulky. Also, these are supposed to be up and these need to be brought down. And the same on this side over here. Hopefully there's nothing else I'm missing. If I am, I, I don't care. We are well beyond being accurate at this point. Yeah, we're just gonna have to transform this without having this on there. If I sound defeated, that's because I am. This figure has broken me. I'm gonna be watching a video on how to transform this while I film this video. So if anything else breaks, I'll catch it on camera. I'll also link that video in the description below. But first, I'm gonna go take a shit and then I'll come back. So first bring these out and then bring the hand down like that. So you can bring this in. Now do the exact same thing with this arm. Now untab both of the arms over here. Now untab this and move it out of the way so you can bring these out. So these need to be out like this right now. And then bring this out and down. Rotate this over. Now we open the chest piece. Untab this and bring it out. Now on the back here, bring these pieces out on both sides right over here. And then bring these pieces out. Then you need to awkwardly bring this piece over so you can align it with this one right over here. Same for the other side right over here. And then these wheels go in right over here. And then bring this wheel down here for now. Once again, do the exact same thing on the other side. Now it looks like these feet come up right over there like that. Bring this foot up as well. Rotate the waist 180 degrees right there. Untab the chest from the legs right over here. This head needs to flip in there like that. And then this piece goes in here. Same here. Now you want to take this piece and bring it out so you can align it right over here. Get that in there. Now we just need to get this top part in to form the front of the truck. We'll align this up as well. Now we can attach these two front pieces together right over here. Now let's flip this over right over here and then these pieces become the side of the truck right over here. Let's bring this up so we can adjust it a little bit and get it all right in there. These need to be at the back. Now bring this back piece down and align it up. Make sure everything's in place. Now bring this wheel up. Same here. So let's adjust all this right here. And hey, it doesn't look too bad. From this side. From this side, it looks absolutely awful. Now, I do like how the front chair looks. It does have a nice silver. You got the Autobot list Autobot logo right there. And from this side, it does look pretty good. I will give it that. You can see some nub marks right over there. This part here feels empty, and it feels like there should be something covering it up. And on the back, you can clearly tell these are his feet, obviously. And once again, there's some more nub and stress marks there and over here. The wheels don't feel too cheap on this one. Here's a look at the underside. The transformation on this felt a bit complex, but that's more of an issue for the Studio Series version. And oh, let's fix that. There we go. And honestly, there's not much to say about the vehicle mode here. I mean, it's a straight up knockoff, so it's going to look pretty much like the Studio Series version. Let's see if we can somehow get these pieces on here. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. Also, it looks like it's flaking everywhere. You might notice I haven't put in everything in properly. I, that's because if you haven't been able to tell, I don't really care. Now, most of the pieces on here do tap together improperly. This right here has a nub mark here, which I think might be affecting its ability to go in. And this isn't going in all the way. Honestly, in vehicle mode, it doesn't look too bad. I don't know what to do with this figure. I can either try to fix it so I can display it in robot mode, or I could just leave it in vehicle mode here because it doesn't look too bad. But overall, this figure was kind of a disappointment because it looked really good and it felt really well built except for the fact that it wasn't okay i lied it looks like some pieces don't really want to stay in properly this is a Transformers Generations Windblade, which was released in 2014, and this figure is pretty bad. Well, so the robot mode is okay, it's not that bad, but the vehicle mode, that's pretty horrendous. Now, Windblade is the first Transformers character made by fans, and from what I've gathered online, this is the first ever figure of her. At least I think it is. Not too much going on on the packaging side of things. She does come with a comic book. Here's a look at the back, showcasing her robot mode, veto mode, and some stats. Now, I have no intention of preserving the packaging. Here's the figure. Now overall, the character design of Windblade is really good, but this figure doesn't really do it any justice. The design of the figure isn't a bad design, but it's not the best. One thing to note about this figure is that it is pretty flimsy. A lot of pieces might just move out of place from time to time and not look right. So if you see that happening, I'm not sorry. The colors on this figure are mostly a red black with some hints of blue and gold on it. Now these wings are pretty stiff and they can be difficult to move. And yeah, the connection on the arms is not the best. Now the instructions show the wings like this, but there is a 
a hinge joint back here so you can angle the wings and have it a bit more accurate to the character design. And if you look at the back of the packaging that I absolutely destroyed, you'll see that they're more angled. But it looks like they couldn't even keep that consistent in the comics. I mean, she could probably move them at will though. So what am I trying to say here? I don't really know. However, it probably is supposed to be like this anyways, but I, I, I don't care. Now let's start off by taking a look at the head of the character because the head on this is very unique. You have this piece over here, which I'm not sure exactly what it's called. If you do know, leave a comment down below. And you have this whole black part right here, which is supposed to resemble hair. And you can see it's a little stylized. I added some lines just to separate it up a bit. And then right above the eyes on the black piece, you have some blue and gold paint on there in a particular design. The eyes appear to be blue as well. And then you have the red and black paint, which is supposed to resemble a kabuki style face paint. And the face sculpt on this figure isn't too bad either. Now these shoulder pieces should be out to the side. Let's do that. Now going down from her head, you have some collars on the side, which do restrict any side to side movement this figure could have. Underneath that, you got some bits of blue paint and it does seem like this is already starting to chip. Now a curious little thing that I noticed when looking at this figure online, a lot of people seem to have these parts over here more outwards, but the instructions say to have them inwards and it's even like that on the comic book cover. Now onto the shoulder pads, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see the design and style it has. The arms are very skinny, not too much going on the rest of the arms. There are some hollow points. Now this red part doesn't really have a whole lot going on, just a little bit of panel working. Then you have this blue piece on the collar and a pretty simple looking hand. Now onto her chest piece, there's not a whole lot going on there. I just realize how that sounded. I don't mean it like that. Detail wise, there's not much going on. You can kind of see these little divots in there and this little triangular shape going down the middle. Down onto the waist, it's very skinny and it's kind of hard to see the design on it. Now on the crotch piece, there's a, there's a, there's a questionable slot there, which is probably not the best place to put it on a figure like this. And it's not really for anything either. Down onto the legs, not a whole lot of detail. There are hollow on the inside. On the back, you can see some atrocious landing gear cable. However, it does have some nice detail on it. Rest of the legs, nothing too much going on there. This figure doesn't really have a whole lot of detail on it. Just a bit of panel working here and there. And you can see a little bit of panel working on the legs. Maybe some panel lining could make this figure look a little bit better. If you move it up though, you will see some detail going on. Now the legs on this figure are really bad. They're designed very poorly and the figure can't really stand up straight. The best way to really get this figure to stand properly is by spreading the legs apart, which looks kind of dumb. And with the connection of the legs being so flimsy, they're going to spread apart anyways. Oh, you haven't left a like and subscribed. Yes, I have to step on you. This figure doesn't really hold in place very well. And these shoulder pads have gone back down. Also, these shoulder pieces just don't stay in place. If you ever move the arms, it'll go along with it. Now look at the back of the figure. You pretty much just have the nose cone. Now for articulation on this figure, the head can move up and down. So you can look down pretty far. And because of these collars, the side to side head movement is very limited. These shoulder pieces can move and the arms are on a ball joint. So you can move them around. However, the wings do obstruct the movement, but with the way they're designed, they can also spin all the way around with the arms. So that's a little clever thing they did. The arms can move out. And because of how the wings are attached, they will move with the arm a little bit. Now there is a hinge joint over here, allowing for some up and down movement of the arms and wings. Like I said earlier, the wings are on a hinge joint, so you can get them in different sorts of orientations. There is bicep rotation. The arms have a 90 degree bend to them. The hands are a little stiff, but they can spin all the way around. They're very stiff, actually. Jeez. Full 360 rotation on the waist. You can rotate the legs a little bit like that, and you can bring the legs out. You can bring them forward. You can bring them back all the way there. You get a knee bend, and you get an outward knee bend, and the heel can move, which it can be kind of flimsy at times. But other than that, there is no other type of foot movement on this figure, which really limits the dynamic posability that you can do with this figure without a stand. And don't mistake this for the stand port. This is the plug-in for the stand. This is for something else. We'll get to that later. And the connection for the port is probably one of the best I've ever seen on a figure. Now, these blades over here can spin, and you can rotate them around. More so for the vehicle mode, though. Now, for accessories, this can come out, and the instructions say that she can hold it in her hand, and I don't know about you, but this doesn't seem like a hand that can hold this. For example, I can try to put it in her hand. Yeah, I... Now, if we do look at this, you can see some of the detail on there. More so when you turn it over to the back. And I am liking how this looks. Now, some parts of the figure are like a glossy black, while other parts like right here are more of a matte black. And it really doesn't help with the aesthetic of the figure. It makes it look very off. Here is her weapon. It's actually in the scabbard, which has a tiny amount of detail on it. But if you open it, you'll see that the blade looks really nice. It starts off with a translucent purple, and then it goes up becoming a clear plastic. A closer look at the handle. Not a whole lot going on. You do have those fans inside, but the rest of it looks pretty simple. You can place a scabbard on either side. There's also a slot over here. And then you can have her hold her weapon. And thank God she can actually hold this one. Oh, that, 
Okay, that came off. Yeah, the connection on this isn't the best, but you could just have her hold it in her hand if you wanted to. Also, I really like the cover of the comic book. I've never read any of the comics, so I have absolutely no idea what's going on, which was a pretty common state of mind for me anyways. Oh, that's a nostalgic smell. Now for the transformation of the figure. Now, one thing I do like about this figure is that the instructions come in robot mode to vehicle mode, as well as vehicle mode to robot mode. First, let's bring down the wings. Now we can open up that chest piece and bring in the head. Close that up. Bring these leg pieces up and over. Same with this one, bring it up and over. Now rotate the waist around. Now rotate the bottom pieces that made the back of the feet and bring the heels up. Same with this one, bring the heel up. Now these do tab into place. Now let's bring that nose cone bit down, snap it into place and let's bring these pieces out. Now, if you don't have these wings just right, the figure won't attach properly, but it doesn't really matter because the connections on this figure are garbage and this arm just keeps popping off. I find it easier if you keep the wings and arm out, hold it from here and then rotate the wings in. Now use this hinge joint to bring both of the arms down. Now bring the arms to the side, flip the figure over, make sure everything's lined up and then these pieces are supposed to tab into the slots on the sides. And now you just want to adjust the figure and make sure everything's in place and good luck with that. And here is the final VTOL mode. Now the vehicle mode on this figure is not good. First of all, things don't hold in place very well and it constantly falls apart. Things are going to just keep tabbing out of place. The top part doesn't look that good and you can clearly tell that these are legs and it doesn't really fit with the top of the veto mode. Also, these gaps are just really ugly. There is a bit of detail, but nothing too crazy. These can move out like I said earlier and you can have them like that. And if you look at the underneath, that's where it looks even worse. The arms don't really tap into anything. They're just kind of laying there on the side. There is some front landing gear you can pull down and here's a closer look at that. You have the jets at the back and some tiny rivets and panel working throughout the figure. A closer look at the cockpit. It's a tinted yellow and it's piss. It's the color of piss. You have the white nose cone over there. Now there is weapon storage underneath the VTOL mode. That's what this hole is for. But now you won't really be able to even display the figure in VTOL mode like this. Overall, the vehicle mode is just really bad. It's not very aesthetically pleasing. The robot mode is much better, but it still has a considerable amount of flaws. This is Coronation Starscream from the Red series. I do like the box art for the figure. I am in love with this image of Starscream. A bit too much. You can see more of it on the side. It does look really cool. Coronation Starscream from the G1 Transformers movie, if that wasn't obvious. On the side, you have all the extra accessories the figure comes with. On the back, just some more product artwork. Now let's open him up. I really like the schematic artwork they got going. But let's take a look at the main figure now. Here is the figure and it's... Uh, not my favorite. I do have a bit of a controversial take on this figure. First of all, the figure is kind of loose, similar to the laws that affect politicians. It's also definitely a much different plastic from what we're used to with other figures. And these wings are very flexible, which isn't a bad thing. Now let's quickly move on to the accessories so I can add them to the figure. He comes with a nice cloth cape, which I do prefer over the Studio Series version. Two shoulder pads, and it looks like this one's already bent. Great. Great quality control from Hasbro. His crown, two extra hand pieces, and two really nice looking effect pieces. Man, this jacket it was a bad idea. First, we can attach the shoulder pads and the cape. It is a bit easier if you take the wings off first because it can be kind of tricky to do. I'm ashamed to admit at how long it took me. The cape doesn't really look too great from the back, unfortunately, but we can now attach these. And here is Coronation Starscream. Now, right off the bat, let's take a good close look at the figure. By the way, stick around to the end because I'm going to be doing a comparison with the Studio Series figure and we're going to see which accessories are cross compatible because you'd be surprised. It looks like there's a lot of paint spillage on the head sculpt for mine. That's really unfortunate. I'm also not a big fan of the head sculpt. It looks a bit too wide. Now my major gripe with this figure is that while it is G1 accurate, it's also kind of not. And that's due to the stylization of the figure. It's definitely a lot more rounded than the G1 show. But let's take a closer look at the figure now. He does have those vents at the side and those vents up here. I do kind of like the cocky smile he has going on. It is very Starscream. The design of the face isn't also too bad. It's very simplistic, reminiscent of G1. There is some nice paintwork going on the vents. Down over to the chest piece, you have a nice silver over there. Some really impressively sculpted fans. The window on the cock piece has a nice gold paint to it and it is removable. And you can see some extra detail inside the figure. And this is made of a more flexible plastic as well. And even though I don't like the design of the figure, the sculpt work on it isn't too bad. It is definitely on the more basic side of things. Which I mean is how it should be. The shoulder pads do have a nice sculpt to them though. And if you lift that up, you can see some of the panel working underneath it. The rest of the arms are fairly basic with a tiny bit of panel working. The hands do look fairly nice. Down over to the legs, there's not really a whole lot going on in that section. This section has the classic Starscream look 
look. And here's a closer look at the rest of the legs. These jet pieces are nicely done though. The sculpt and paintwork is really good. I don't fully understand the choice of having these marks. To be fair, I don't understand most things, but they are supposed to be there. And even though it is show accurate, it can make it kind of hard to get the figure to stand sometimes. Of course, it's gonna work properly when I show it on camera. Here's a quick look at the back, which does have a nice sculpt to it. Probably should have shown this off before I put on the cape. The paint job for the red on this figure is done really well. I do feel like they could have made it a bit more vibrant because these blues are really in your face. Here's a look at the classic Starscream Null Rays, and they look pretty much just like every other Null Rays out there. I do like how it's kind of singed at the end, but I feel like maybe that's a bit too much. They also fall off easier than my sanity from watching anime. Here's a look at his wings, which are definitely a different color from the rest of the figure because it is a different type of material. There's some nice lines going on and the upside down Decepticon symbol, which is accurate to the show. He also has those nice stripes going through, which I feel like would be better if they were more vibrant. Quick look at the back. There is quite a bit going on here and you basically just have a gray and a darker gray. Now due to the stylization of this figure and the material it's made out of, I really don't feel like it's made for collectors. This definitely feels more like a children's product. I mean, most Transformer figures are anyways. Now for articulation, the head can move up and down like that. You do get a full 360 head rotation. Very minor movement there. The arms can move up and since the wings are able to move backwards, you are able to get a full 360 rotation, which is nice. Rotation at the biceps, a really nice double hinge joint for the elbows. The arms do have a backwards bend as well. The hands can move in and out and you can easily rotate them. The wings can fold back. 360 waist rotation. You can give him an ab crunch, which is easier to do if you take this off. And then you can give him a nice crunch. Leg can move out and it is on a ball joint. There is a rotation there. Double hinge joint for the knees. There's a hinge joint on the feet as well as a pivot and this can also move. Now I'm not going to complain about the lack of transformation for this figure. Well, maybe a little bit. While this figure cannot transform, which is what this line is going for and that's perfectly okay, the articulation doesn't really make up for it. Posing this figure isn't very fun because the legs can be kind of flimsy. And with the shoulder pads and null rays, Positioning his arms can be a bit difficult. On top of that, there's no port for a stand, so there's no chance of any aerial poses. Attaching the effect pieces is pretty basic, and that's how you do that. And then for the hands, pop them out and place in the other hand. And the sculpt work on this hand is also really nice. I will give it that. And I've also realized throughout this entire video, I forgot to put on the crown. There you go. And there is a full look of Coronation Starscream. This crown looks like dog shit. Now here he is next to Studio Series Starscream. And yeah, they do look very different. As you can see, the head sculpts are incredibly different. This one obviously has a lot more detail. It is basically just Earthrise Starscream. There's more paintwork on the shoulder pads. The Null Rays are attached to them as well. And if you want to compare the Null Rays, there's a look at that. I definitely think this one is much better. In terms of which figure is more accurate to the movie, I'm definitely going to go with this one. Despite the stylization they went for, the color of the reds are different, but kind of similar. Definitely more noticeable on the purple shoulder pads and the blues throughout this figure. The sculpt on the legs are also very different. This one has a hard cape that can fold out, and I much prefer the cloth cape the Red series has. This one also doesn't have the nose cone at the back that this one does because this is a non-transforming figure so it doesn't need that. And the crown fell off. In fact, if you want a comparison of the crowns, you can see the mold is entirely different and I much prefer the Studio Series one. Now let's take a look and see what accessories are cross compatible. Let me just strip them down real quick. <laughs> The crown won't fit because it is a different head sculpt. Null rays are a no-go. The shoulder pads do go on, but it does look kind of bulky. And you can still get the cape on there. You can put the cape on the Studio Series shoulder pad as well. And I really like how that looks. The effect pieces are compatible. Now for this guy, there's no place for Coronation Starscream's null rays to peg into. The crown surprisingly holds in place. The shoulder pads do not fit. And there's no place for that cape to go on either. He fits on the throne very well though. Overall, this Starscream isn't my cup of tea. The MPH S02 Commander is a third-party Optimus Prime figure by MPH. Studio. We're going to take a look at the good, the bad, and some major problems that I have with this figure. Problems that frustrated me to no end. This is the packaging right here, and through the window, you can see just how tiny he is. He's basically a legend scale figure. You have a lot of fire here to symbolize, um, uh, fire. Turning over to the side, I do like this illustration of Cybertron and some more stuff in English and not English. Turning over to the back, some nice illustration of Optimus Prime, side basic warning to disregard, and an illustration of Optimus at the top in robot mode and vehicle mode at the bottom. This was also sent to me by the show's store, link in the description below. Now let's open it up. Where are the instructions? There's no instructions. So it looks like we do get this holographic card with illustrations on both sides, some extra hands, and his Energon Axe. We'll take a closer look at all of these later. Let's unpackage the figure. 
Okay, straight away, these pieces fell off. So now after messing around with the figure, I have very mixed feelings about it. First of all, the major issues of these pieces, they constantly come off. So you might as well glue them into place. Now, while this figure looks absolutely great, I'm not the biggest fan of the smaller size. However, some people might like that. My major issue though, is that the figure is very flimsy. I find myself struggling to get this guy to stay in a pose. This abdomen area doesn't really have a secure connection. The left leg is loose, so is the knee, as well as the right elbow. However, let's talk about the aesthetics of the figure. He looks pretty G1 accurate, in my opinion, and he doesn't have any wheels showing in the robot mode, which is pretty impressive. The head sculpt is pretty decent. He has the classic G1 look with the forehead piece, the blue eyes, and the classic mouthpiece. But the longer I stare at it, the weirder it looks. Like something about it seems just slightly off. I don't like how the bunny ears are slightly pointed outwards. I'm thinking the mouthpiece was casted in gray plastic because there is some blue paint in this section, which doesn't seem to entirely match with the rest of the head. The classic Trek headlights with yellow paint, some trans lucent blue windows which look really nice and some windshield wipers. Now this is supposed to be able to flip over to be more G1 accurate but every time I try to do that it pops out and for some reason it just doesn't want to pop back in this way so I just leave it like how it came in the box. It's even like that in a few promo images and makes it feel a bit more like MP10. The frames for the windows are red paint along with the windshield wipers being silver paint. As always for a G1 Optimus you got the classic gray piece going around his body. The grill piece is a faux grill piece I know. Not a big deal for me but I know some people don't like that. His arms emulate the G1 blockiness of the original show with some tiny detail added to accentuate his look. Also, since this is a third party figure and no Autobot insignia, the smokestacks are nice, but they do pop out a lot. The classic Optimus Prime shapes further down his arm. This panel doesn't seem to want to stay in all the way. The hands are sculpted fine. I do have some marks on my copy of the figure. The yellow on his skirt piece is very vibrant. I also like how the skirt piece is attached to the leg, so when you move it, they move together. The side flap is an actual skirt piece. The back part of the skirt, however, is just a solid piece. This does limit the leg articulation. The legs are looking nice with this raised bed over here. Nice silver fuel tanks. The legs are a nice sculpt as well in a nice dark shade of blue. And the sculpt work of the feet is pretty good. Turning over to the back, we will see this figure doesn't have any backpack, giving this figure a nice clean side profile. There is some nice silver paint at the back on this section and right below it. The rest of it is fairly simple. Some red paint on the back skirt piece, some more detail on the back of the legs, and the rest of the legs are simple and blocky. And here's a look at the underneath of the feet. Now he does come with his ion blaster, which looks just like his ion blaster should. It is not five millimeter compatible as you can see right there. Taking a look at the other accessories the figure comes with, this is the Energon Axe. It's in a nice translucent orange with a good shape to it. I, I don't know what else to say about it. Even though the figure didn't come with any instructions, it was still pretty easy to figure out how to put on. Remove the hand. This orange piece needs to be pushed in all the way. Then we can attach this over here. And he looks pretty good with his Energon Axe. Now taking a look at the other hands, he has these hands that come pre-attached with the figure. Two open hands as well. But the third pair of hands is something very interesting. These are kind of like heavy metal devil horns and I'm not sure if Optimus just listens to a lot of Ron and James Dio in his spare time, but these are very interesting hands to have. I don't see the purpose of this, but it does make posing a bit more fun. I'm pretty sure this is an alternative attachment for his blaster. Instructions would have helped me figure that out sooner. It is very astonishing that this figure doesn't come with any instructions. This may have just been a mistake for my copy of the figure, or maybe since this is an early copy, they just don't have them made yet. I found two videos online though, and I will link them in the description below. But before we get to the transformation, let's take a look at the articulation. The articulation is good, but posing this figure isn't fun because of how flimsy it is. So for the head, let's hope these don't pop out. He can look up and down. Full 360 rotation. The head is very tight though. And this fell off. The arms can move out about there. Full 360 rotation. Oh, nope, nope. Everything fell apart. Full 360 rotation on there. This arm can pop out like that if you wanted to utilize that for some extra movement. A really good elbow bend. Some arm rotation. It does feel a bit loose though. And you can wiggle it back and forth a bit. A 360 waist rotation and an ab crunch. However, once you do that, this piece stays out. So you're going to have to readjust it every time. The legs can move forward all the way up there. The knee bend, however, is only 90 degrees. The legs can move out to the side. And as mentioned earlier, the back leg movement is extremely limited because of this non-movable skirt piece. There is a leg rotation. This foot can spin a full 360, can move down all the way over there, and we can move them up all the way up there. Now, this figure does come with a matrix of leadership. However, getting to it is kind of awkward. Initially, when I tried opening up the chest piece, these pieces were all the way out, and that kind of limited my movement. So you have to push them in. So that way, you can bring these out all the way. Now, once you've pushed them in, they're kind of a pain to get back out. So I just kind of leave it like that because I just don't care enough. But that is kind of some weird and annoying engineering. Let's take a look at the matrix. Now it's a pretty simple sculpted matrix. It has some orange and blue paint. I haven't tried taking it out yet and I don't think I'm going to. I honestly don't even know if it's possible. The rest of the chamber inside is pretty decent. I'm not expecting a whole lot of detail because this is a G1 figure, but for what it is, what's in there is pretty good. Now for the figure's transformation, we're gonna pull the chest piece up, bring this 
this grill piece down, rotate the figure 180 degrees, take these back pieces and bring it out, same with the one on this side, move the arms out of the way for now, make sure this abdomen piece is out as well, bring this section out and flip this panel out, do the same thing for the other side of the figure, now we need to rotate this piece around to the front, same with the one on this side, let's bring these pieces down, open up the chest piece, bring this piece up and then pull on it bringing it down, flip over the head, and the ear pieces do run into the grill piece, come over to the arms and then flip this piece out, and nope it, it doesn't want to stay in place, we need to bring in the hand and I don't know what happened here, everything is in the wrong place. The figure is just a little bit too floppy. Now we can bring in the hand, slide up the arm, come over and do the exact same thing for the other arm. I do apologize if I cover up parts too much. This figure just has a lot of small pieces and that piece fell out. Slide up the arm. Now we need to bring in the arms and this sidearm piece keeps flopping around which kind of makes it a bit difficult to do. God damn it. This shouldn't be so hard, but we just need to get it in there and then do the same with this arm. That arm piece will just not stay in place. And there we go. I think I scratched my figure from doing this. So just do what I do, except, you know, better. And now let's just adjust everything in place. Bring this up. There's these window pieces inside the figure that do need to flip out. Might be easier if I use a tool and we're just not going to worry about that. Bring in this side as well. Bring the legs back and the truck piece up. Move the fire grill piece up. Bring up the fuel tanks and leave them out there for now. Open this panel up. This piece needs to come out to the side, we can bring that down. This needs to rotate, push it in, and now we can collapse all these pieces into place. Can be a bit tricky to do. This does tab in there. Same for the other leg, open that up, flip that over, collapse in the legs, and close that all up. Bring the legs together, rotate the foot, and position it this way. Same with this foot, bring the fuel tanks all the way off. Oh, fuck. What is wrong with this figure? This one appears to be very stubborn. Also, I totally forgot there's these panels in here that are supposed to come out. Now we can adjust this into- God damn it. Okay, here's the final truck mod for the figure, and honestly, it does look really good. It would look even better if I did the mirrors right, but that was quite a pain in the ass, and transforming this figure is a pain in the ass. This level of complexity for a figure this small makes the figure a bit difficult to transform. If the figure was bigger, it would be much easier to transform because it'd be easier to grab onto all those parts. I do understand that it does need to be this complex for it to look this good, and you'll get used to it over time. But regardless of my shitty transformation skills, the truck mod doesn't look too bad. I do like how they did the truck bed. It does look very nice and clean. This piece fell off. That is very annoying. I am kind of struggling to get it to be all flushed, but it does have some nice truck details. If you can actually do it properly, it'll look pretty good. I've just been struggling with this figure for about an hour now, so I just don't really care enough to fix it. The front of the truck mode also looks really good. This figure looks great in truck mode, and the robot mode also looks stellar. However, with the loose parts, which in turn does affect the transformation, it is hard for me to recommend it. This is Optimus Primal and Skull Cruncher. These are mainline Transformers Rise of the Beast toys from the Beast Alliance subline. This is my second time trying to review this. The first time I bought it, I noticed the head was missing. A quick look at the packaging. These two figures do combine to form whatever that is. And it's very interesting that these two figures combine considering this one is a Maximal and this one is a Decepticon. The sides of the packaging just have Optimus Primal on them. Nothing special. And I guess this is considered a combiner of sorts. A look at the back showing off the figures. Optimus Primal looking not too great. Skull Cruncher and then the combined mode once again. All the ancient... <laughs> There's a monkey face there. All the ancient oops. But as I was saying, all the ancient symbolism on here looks really cool. Now let's open it up and see if I regret the $22 I spent on this. I am so glad this one has a head this time. Let's put the tail on. So here are the two figures and they are a bit disappointing. You'll see why. The articulation is bad. The transformation for Optimus Primal is also pretty bad. The gator just kind of feels like a plastic brick with moving parts. But anyways, let's start off with Optimus Primal first. The amount of detail on him is really good. Like this figure is sculpted really well. There is quite a mixture of mechanical and gorilla parts on this figure, which is how it should be. It's just that there's a lot of things preventing this figure from being any great. And I know this line isn't really meant for collectors, but I'm still going to be a bit critical about it. No mercy. The head sculpt is done fairly decently and it looks like this face sculpt is based off the Beast Wars show. I think the mouth is where it looks kind of weird and that could be because of the severe lack of paint on here. His face is pretty much just entirely blue. Based off the show, he should have more silver on him and red eyes. The color of eyes also blend into the face. Further down to the neck, nothing much. The chest piece is done pretty well. You have the Maximal logo right over there. A bit of intricacies on this section and over here. I don't know how to explain it, but these little bits right over here. The uh, anal beads. And all the mechanical parts of this part of the body are done really well. It might be a bit difficult to see, but the paintwork on here is done a bit sloppily. A closer look at the legs, you have the mechanical bits here and the fur bits over there. This section, I think, is sculpted really well. It seems like they put a lot of time and care into it. These pieces are blue and there's a little bit of paint spillage you can see. But like I said, the rest of 
outfit, not too bad. And the feet are looking pretty sniffable. The arms are also sculpted really well. You have the gorilla bits over here, followed by more mechanical bits. And it looks like the mechanical and gorilla bits kind of blend over here. Further down, this all looks really nice. And you have more of the ape hair over there. Fingers are done pretty well. The thumb is kind of hidden away over there. Also, this figure has an insane amount of hollow bits. Like, I understand if they do it here and there, but this is just ridiculous. Now, if we look at the back, a lot of it looks very Chewbacca-like. It's done in a brown color, and you can see the texture for a lot of the ape hair on there, which I think is done pretty well. Further down to this area, more of that sculpt work. This is also done really well. A lot of the gorilla bits with a little bit of the robot parts. And then once again, a lot of hollowness over there. And these hollow bits aren't really for the transformation either. I mean, it does help with the articulation, which we'll get to later, but the transformation on this is basically just kind of one step. It says it's six steps, but kind of. First, I still want to talk more about the design of the figure. Now, I mentioned how I felt like the head sculpt was based off the Beast Wars cartoon earlier. I think this entire figure is basically a mixture of the movie version of Optimus Primal and the Beast Wars version, and you can really see it a lot throughout the figure, especially with the colors of the red and blue and this chest piece over there. I have this version of Optimus Primal, which I bought to review but just haven't done yet, and you can see a lot of the similarities between the two figures. Might as well just open it up. So as you can see, the head sculpts are pretty similar. They both have that circle area in the chest piece. Both are a mixture of mechanical and gorilla parts. Quick look at the back. This one has a lot more attention to detail in the ape hair and a lot more of it on this one. This figure I feel like isn't completely cohesive in its color schemes. Like you have the brown hair over here, but the rest of it is just all gray. And I don't really think it's worth painting this figure either. Now onto articulation. Uh <laughs> <laughs> There's barely any. So the head cannot move at all. These arms can spin 360 and they can move at they're on a ball joint. You saw nothing. No rotation at the arms, no bend at the arms, no hand rotation, no waist rotation. These legs are also on a ball joint, so they can move out pretty far up. You can bring them out to the side, you can bring them back, and you do have a knee bend, which is pretty good. There's also foot movement back and forth, and that's it. That's all the articulation on this figure. And before we get to the transformation, let's get to Skull Cruncher. So once again, a lot of the detail on here is done really well. Like all the gator scales are done superbly, in my opinion. And the gator head looks pretty good too. But once again, this is also a mixture of the organic parts with the mechanical parts. And he appears to have more reinforced mechanical bits on him, which is pretty interesting. And the head on this is removable for the combined mode. The one I originally bought had the peg broken off and it was stuck in here. But if you want to see a close look at the teeth, he does have teeth. That is a thing he has. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to be some kind of like blaster weapon that's inside his mouth. He's got his spikes up here and this would probably hurt to step on. So you don't want to leave it lying around. Some nice yellow eyes. I do like this mechanical bit up at the front. This kind of ruins the whole gator aesthetic for me, but it is necessary for that combined mode, which I'll show later. A quick look at the other side. This part's not obscured by that thing over there, so it does look more cohesive, but the mismatched colors here is kind of weird. The sculpt of the tail is done really nice. He's got that gold tip over there, and this does come out to become some kind of brutal melee weapon in the combined mode for Optimus Primal. Now, the articulation for this guy is fairly basic. The crocodile mouth can open and close. It can also turn only to the left. Derek Zoolander would be jealous can't turn left. All these arms are on a ball joint so they can move a full 360 and they can move out except for the ones on this side because it is obstructed by these bits over here so it's kind of hard to move them around so that does limit the rotation a bit. Now this guy doesn't have a transformation or anything he's just as is. Now for Optimus Primal's transformation all you need to really do is open this part up rotate it around and put it in and that's it that's really it like all the extra steps the instructions say is to make it more monkey so all you really need to do is bring these out and position the feet and that's basically all you have to do and that is kind of disappointing and you can still see the blue of the back head appearing there now the sculpt for the gorilla mode is done really really well in my opinion it feels like there's a lot more paint to this section but not really it's just the silver parts over here and the blue eyes but all the details on the face are done really well he's got his giant nostrils like a gorilla should have you have his mouth over there and just to look all over i think it's done really well and then a look at the chest piece it does seem a bit kind of like he's wearing armor over the gorilla parts it is done pretty decently once again not a whole lot of color to it. The chest piece and abdomen are painted. Now for the combined mode, which is pretty easy to do. First, we need to transform him back into his Optimus Primal mode. Otherwise, this won't fit on. Next, we need to rotate all the legs to where they're facing upwards. Next, these two pegs plug into these two holes and we just stick that in there. Make sure it's secure in place. Now we can take this out and move this out of the way and hold this down while you're bringing this down. Otherwise, this will just keep popping off. It is very annoying to do. Me, a grown man, had trouble with this. So now what we can do is take out this tail go ahead and place it in his hand we can take 
this mouthpiece off and the instructions say to just put it over here. And yeah, it looks ugly. I think it would be cooler if this was that alligator prime instead of skull cruncher. And you know what this reminds me of? This feels like a battleizer for a power ranger, except not as cool looking. But a closer look at all the new parts, the face does look pretty good. It does look kind of like a lion to me. You have tiny teeth over there and you can see a mouth, basic yellow eyes. You have this front piece that Optimus Primal has, and then you have some like gator parts on there. Further down to the chest piece in this area, and it's nothing special really. I also don't know how I can expand on this, so I'm just going to move on. And with these pieces on, the articulation for the arms has become super limited, and just by moving it back there, it's starting to undo itself. This piece can move, like I said, and I guess it is supposed to be some kind of blaster weapon, but other than that, like there's not a whole lot to say about this figure. Like I said, I know it's not aimed for collectors, and you are getting two figures for the price of one. I'd rather get one decent figure like this Megatron was, rather than two half-assed figures with a gimmick. The base Optimus Primal figure feels kind of like an oversized core class figure, or kind of like a bootleg. 